Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from CA Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Deep Cut Dive. I've got the other end of the Zoom line, Mr. Jeff Young. Good morning, my friend. How are you today? Ahoy, mateys. We're talking a little who today. The who or the ooh, right? How did, how did the Brits say that? The ooh? The who? That's right. So, uh, Come on, tell me who are you? <laughs> Just got a singing voice on today. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff and I have each picked out five uh, non-popular Who tracks. So we're not talking about the FM or AM radio songs, the songs that they play every single show, the songs that are on all of their live albums. And you know, we tried to go a little bit deeper than that. Uh, it's weird, Jeff. When I was like kind of doing this, I, I really wanted to pull like some deep cuts off of their more known albums and some, you know, maybe not so known albums. And then I realized after I went through that, it's like they have these like rarities albums like, uh, um, uh, God, now I'm drawing a blank on the names of some of these albums. They got like all these albums that had like all these B-sides. We're talking about some real odds and sods today. Odds and sods, meaty, beady, big and bouncy, you know, all that kind of stuff. I didn't really go to those because I'm like, they have like all those compilations that have all those rarities. I said, you know what? Right. I'm going to kind of go, I mean, there's, there's two ways to do that. I could have gone that route. I decided not to. I wanted to try and- I want to see if we have any duplications today because they have such a wide catalog compared to yesterday with Terry Kath, a little more- you know, he didn't get to put out as many albums. Yeah. So uh, curious if we have any overlap today. We'll see. We'll see. I, uh, I, I tried to go truly, truly deep here for the most part. Um, one, one of my songs is kind of like a borderline because it's from an immensely popular album, but I still think it's, a, it's kind of a deep track. But I'll let you kick it off with your first selection. Oh, my friend. Oh. We're starting at my number five, and that doesn't mean I don't have any additional numbers below that, or above that, I should say. But how about we start off with a album I was just singing, Who Are You? I'm going to pick the starry bonus track entitled Guitar and Pen. Your guitar or your pen. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, should I just throw it out there now? That was that was also my choice from. Uh, really? Are you? Yeah, it was. I I almost didn't pick number that one. Five, was that your number five choice? Honestly. Uh, it was actually my number four choice. Uh, I, I kind of went in like chronological order. I was actually going to pick uh, Music Must Change, which actually was my other selection. And I had that down originally. Then I'm like, you know what? Guitar and Pen is actually a better deep cut from this album. So you and I were on the same wavelength. I mean, it's a, that's, a, that's a fun song. I, I like his like slashing chords on that. I like the mm -hmm. piano. Roger sounds great. You know, Moon is doing, you know, by this time, Keith Moon was kind of like, you know, a shell of his former self, but he's doing all these kind of really cool symbol things on there. It's, uh, I, I never understood why that wasn't released as a single. I think that's a pretty catchy, very hook laden song. And I always I might have to play it on music without boundaries. Next. You might have to, you might have to. So, all right. So we, well, we, we tied on one already. So let's see. So uh, go for number two or number four, whatever, whatever, whatever the direction you're going on your list. How about uh, from the who by the numbers? Who by Gematria? This is uh, a little tune called Dreaming from the Waste. Good selection. You could arguably say almost every song on that album is a deep cut, right? That's, that's, a, that's a weird album for them uh, coming off. You know, I, it's like you, you do a little research. I've read a bunch of Who books and uh, I got like a uh, Pete Townsend autobiography and he talks a lot about how that was the, like one of the hardest albums he ever had to make. He like felt like the, the, the well was dry. He was just having a hard time coming up with, uh, you know, material. It's like he felt he'd said it all already, but yet that's got some really good strong songs on that album, I think, you know, but it's one of those albums, I think in their catalog, especially during the seventies, it kind of gets ignored a little bit. So uh, very cool choice. We'll, we'll be revisiting that album in a couple minutes. Thank you, my friend. So my next choice, uh, I, <laughs> I was like, I got to pick something from who's next. And then I kept going up and down, up and down. I'm like, every one of these songs is like so well known. And I said, you know I what? There's, that a bargain. 
the, the best, best I ever had. had. Um, but that's so not good. The... And then the sloppy drums by Keith Moon come in. <laughs> 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 it's Keith on the sloppy drums. <laughs> but my choice actually from this album is an absolute beautiful song that I think gets the least amount of attention on here. And that's The Song Is Over. The song is over. Just, and I, I love, the, I love that. The, the fact that you got both uh, Daltrey and Townsend singing on that, doing co-lead vocals. I think it's magnificent. Uh, the vocal melodies are just great. You have Nicky Hopkins guesting on piano. I love the lush arrangement. It's kind of like on this album, it's the least kind of like Manic Who song, but I think it works for all those different reasons. And I, I just, I love the song is over. And I think it's, you know, right in the middle of the album. I think it gets overshadowed by a lot of the other more, uh, famous songs on this album and uh, you know what a what a fantastic album it's definitely one of the you know like a desert island disc I'm sure for a lot of people it's just just top to bottom absolutely spectacular and then you know I also thought about you know you got all the kind of the leftover stuff from this album from these sessions the lighthouse sessions you've got like water and uh, you know pure and easy and you know all the naked eye and all these great songs I'm like oh it's just such a I think in the, in the career of Pete Townsend and the who uh, he was just, the creativity was just like spewing out of him at this point, you know, mm. Tommy and this album and Quadrophenia is just crazy when you think about it. So, all right, back to you. I've talked enough. You know, <laughs> started on some Tommy deep cuts. <laughs> about uh, from the kids are all right. People from the kids are all right. A quick one while he's away, my friends. That deep enough? Well, I mean, that deep? It, I've never heard it on the radio. <laughs> you know, it's a song that they played live a bit back in the day, but I think the casual fan does not know that song. That's a fantastic song. So that a quick one while he's away was actually the song that got Townsend interested in writing these like long form compositions and like mm -hmm. rock operas as they like to call mm -hmm. them back in the day. I think it's a terrific song. I think it's I think it's deep enough. It's a catalyst. As yeah, it were. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I dig it. I think it's a great, great song. I looked at that as well. I was like, hmm, that, that could be a choice. I, I tried hard on those first couple albums to find like deep cuts. And I'm thinking, yeah, most of those first couple albums are deep cuts. But man, those first couple albums are very kind of R&B mod type stuff. And, and it's like, you know, I think for like the kind of casual fan, we want to kind of bring in a little, little bit later. But that I love that album and that song. It's a good choice. Yeah. All right, I, man, I went up and down throughout Quadrophenia, and I said I got to find at least one song from Quadrophenia from 1973, a song called I've Had Enough. Uh, I like, what I like about this song is that it, it takes some of the love reign over me themes and kind of puts it throughout the song. You got the, it's big and epic, got nice acoustic and electric guitar layers, uh, synths, you got a really good Daltrey vocal, Pete's singing as well on here too, Moon is just rumbling all over the place. Um, I, I found it a little difficult to take something like I looked at Tommy and Quadrophenia. I, I couldn't find anything that was deep enough from Tommy. I mean, Tommy to me is just so ingrained the entire album in like everything that who has ever done. I really had a hard time. Cousin Kevin. Well, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you literally, you know what it is? Cousin. <laughs> there are plenty of like short songs on Tommy that I think could have worked here. Um, I'm your wicked Uncle Annie. I love, yeah, I love. So that glad song. that you don't see or hear me as I fiddle about. about fiddle Keith Moon about, is that? Fiddle that about. was the perfect, perfect role in the movie for Keith Moon. Oh yeah, well he's such a character, yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, um, I've had enough from Quadrophenia. That's my yeah. selection from this great concept album. Back to you. I guess that throws the uh, volleyball back to me, doesn't it? Yes. How about I pick a Quadrophenia deep cut called Drowned? That was one of my other choices. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. That's a good one. It's a sweet one. Yeah. The whole album is great. It just, mm -hmm. uh, and it flows so well. I was listening to it last night. I'm like, man, this album just kind of like, you know, and Tommy does the same thing as well. Both those albums just kind of really flow well. And I like how they have like the main songs and then kind of like the little short, shorter tunes that kind of bridge the gap between the other tracks. Masterfully done. Just great, great stuff. All right. Uh, we'll go back to who by numbers, right? It's this, this piece of work right here from 1975. Uh, in a hand or a face? 
the very last track on the album. Does it get any deeper than that? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we talked a little bit about how tough this album was for Townsend to make, but I think this is a great hard rock song with, for my money, some of the best lead guitar playing from Pete, who's not normally known as a lead guitar player uh, from that period. And Moon is just all over this track. Um, yeah, I'm going round and round. I'm going round and round. The lyrics over and over and over again. Just a really, really cool tune on a, like I said, kind of a weird album for them. It's not their most immediate album, but it's got a bunch of gems kind of tucked into the album. You know, most people think of Slip Kid and Squeeze Box, but, uh, you know, a lot of the good stuff on here. Dream from the Waste, like you mentioned. However Much I Booze is a cool tune. Um, good stuff on here. Good, good underrated Who album. And the baton goes back to you. Well, I, I wanted to pick uh, Keith Moon, Bell Boy. I got to get running now, but I'll give you some. I'll give you something else. I think I slipped that in there, right? People are like, "What? What song? How about?" Uh, who the Who sell out? They had the best album titles and covers. Yeah, they did. They did. Clever. Who's next? Who by the numbers? And you got to yep. connect the dots. Was cool. How about Early Morning Cold Taxi? Oh, that's a fun song. Yeah, yeah, that's a good choice. Yeah. The Deluxe. Is that the Deluxe track? I believe so. I, I have it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure if that's the Deluxe track or if the next one I'm going to honorable mention is the okay. Deluxe track, but it's Deluxe, no doubt. It's delectable. And it's called <laughs> Early Morning Cold Taxi. Yep, yep. And it's yep. great for that time of the uh, day, especially here in New York. It's early in the morning. You got to catch a taxi. Yep. Got your walk fan on. You're listening to the Who. <laughs> taxi. That's right. That's right. Hail it down. Hail it down. It's it's funny. It's people who don't uh, who live like out in the country in different parts of the world or the or here in the U.S. They don't they don't know what it's like to be walking around New York City trying to hail a cab. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do sometimes. You know, not to, not to deviate from our conversation, but um, we were talking, you did that great Keith Moon impression before, and we've talked about Keith Moon the Loon quite a bit here. If you had to, if you could go back in time and like hang out and go have drinks with like three rock stars from that era, Keith Moon's got to be one of them, right? Right? <laughs> Keith Moon on the sloppy drum kit. Yeah, because he had a great personality. And I mean, for a drummer... He was probably one of the first star drummers that really stood out in the band, you know, kind of like Tommy Lee and Motley Crue. I mean, yeah. someone who's really, you're looking at that cat. You're not just looking at the singer and the guitar player. Could you imagine like being in the room together? It was, it's crazy personality. I, I just think it, could you imagine being in a room together with Keith Moon and John Bonham at the same time? Whew. That band's going to go down like a Led Zeppelin. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. My final choice here today, uh, I'm going to go to 1982's It's Hard. It's very, 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 very hard uh, for a song called Dangerous, uh, a song written by John Entwistle. This was actually um, the B-side to the title track, um, but nobody knows Dangerous. And, you know, John Entwistle wrote like three, four songs on this album. He was pretty... Uh, pretty uh pretty busy when it came to the songwriting around this time and i don't know whether that says uh something to his uh creativity at the time or townsend's lack of i don't really know but anyway it's it's a good rocker uh it's got great use of use of synths and keyboards you know it's 1982 because that's those keyboards are starting to and synthesizers starting to become a big part of rock music uh but you know it's interesting you listen to this album or the one before it and you really notice how much different kenny jones was of a drummer uh in this band based on keith moon very you know, i was listening listen to this album last night and like the drums are so straightforward and that's what and, and he's a fine drummer don't get me wrong i always like kenny jones a lot you know in, in the, the the faces and one in the small faces but it's like i don't know for this band i really miss keith moon a lot and that kind of busy <laughs> out of control in common keith had more in common with animal from sesame street than he did with our buddy kenny yeah. School, but yeah. Was the same. It really wasn't the same. But you gotta have, you gotta have the bellboy. 
Yeah. So, but Dangerous is a good song. I, I dig it uh, from an album. I'm, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a huge fan of those uh, Who early '80s albums. There, there, there's some good songs on there. They're okay for what they are. I but, like uh, uh, Eminence Front. Yeah, Eminence Front is great, and you know, it's I like the title at the track top. And, yeah. Speaking of Pete Townsend doing some cool soloing. Yep. Yeah. Really fits the tune. You can sing every lick. He's not a shredder. No, no. He's a strong rhythm guitarist. And you know what? I hear a ton of influence on Eddie Van Halen. And the way Eddie plays rhythm. Think of a tune like uh, In a Simple Rhyme off Women and Children First. Yep. Even the Alex is drumming in that. Da! It's very who. Even though it sounds nothing like the who because it's Eddie's you know, with all his other influences, I, I really hear some Keith Moon and some Pete Townsend in that in a simple rhyme off Van Halen and other Van Halen tunes as well. Sure. You know, he was listening heavy. He loved Montrose, said he loved Black Sabbath. He loved Leslie West. And he loved Pete Townsend in the Who. I mean, you know, for my money. Another cat who you can, probably the number one Pete Townsend disciple is Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick. Oh, abs absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So much who, influence yeah. in Cheap Trick's music, and Robin Sander, even a little bit of a Roger Daltrey tinge in his vocal. A lot of people don't know, they're all Swedes, Cheap Trick. Just saying. <laughs> Swedes from Rock, Rockford, Illinois. That's right. I got, got, any, got any honorables? Farm and tour, he has a drum museum. And my buddy knew Rick Nielsen's son, which led to a surprise trip for me and a Music Without Boundaries back episode with Bunny Carlos. He has Ringo Starr's uh, Ludwig kit from Sgt. Pepper. You know, he has, this, he has the hugest Ludwig drum collection I've ever seen. Plus, I got to see the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, kit was all set up there in his rehearsal area. Very cool cat, Mr. Bunny, Carlos, and Very. Again, you hear some Keith Moon for sure in his drumming. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's probably the number one band that I'd say if you listen to that band where you're going to hear the most two influence of any band that I could think of, Cheap Trick. Yeah, I wouldn't argue that at all. And uh, mm -hmm. for my money, speaking of Townsend, I think he's one of the greatest rhythm guitar players that ever lived. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you and look at innovative. him and you yeah really innovative think what I mean. was going on when he was writing these tunes he's it's not like he was ripping any of this stuff off from other folk i mean what if like terry kath yesterday we're talking about another musical visionary today and yep. pete townsend yep yep absolutely yeah and a lot of people talk about like you know greatest guitar players of all time and uh you know people will say, well, you know, Townsend and, you know, Keith Richards, not great lead players, either one of them. Man, both of those guys, People killer need to rhythm players. This, this very key point about greatest guitar players of all time. <clears throat> it's not and all about a million miles an hour, right? Just a shredosaurus. The greatest guitar player of all time to me is a player, and there's many, I mean, on my list, but they encompass not only shredding and be able to play, and that's not even a, a necessity. Like think of how simple Van Halen played on songs like Ain't Talking About Love, his solo, or Running With The Devil. First year guitar student could play that solo. It's songwriting craftsmanship. Songwriting craftsmanship is I think a huge part of what makes you one of the greatest guitar players that visionary aspect, whether it was Pete Townsend coming up with this, you know, not only think of the keyboard stuff he did, how innovative, just in Bob O'Reilly yep. and uh, the rock opera stuff. And then you have, you know, the aspect of the guy's personality and the soul of their playing more than their shredding, like at the beginning of Eminence Front. You know, he's not going to compete with Ingve, Right. <clears throat> but it's music. Luckily, music's not a competition. That's the best news about it. But it's something memorable. And again, 
when a player writes a song, like whether it's Pinball Wizard or Happy by the Stones or Brown Sugar, and it stands the test of time or Running with the Devil or something like, you know, any of Van Halen's great hits Unchained, that's a guitar hero to me. You know what I'm saying? Randy Rhodes, think of how he came in with Ozzy and took him from this whole dark, sad, doom and gloom kind of thing. They come out with these more happy metal tunes like, uh, you know, I Don't Know, which was more of a positive, crazy train sounds. It's more major. It's not so, even though there's minor stuff in it, it's a little bit more happy, I'd say, than Sabbath. So that's that's what all-time great guitar players, you know, yep. meet me. And Pete's definitely up there for me. And uh, you can see from players like Rick Nielsen, Eddie Van Halen, how that plays out over the years. And I hope more young guitar players will go back and listen to the strong rhythm guitar stylings of Mr. Townsend, because I think a lot of kids don't play, spend a lot of time on the rhythm. For example, I love Ingve, but I just last night, it came up in my newsfeed, uh, Ingve and Jeff Scott Soto doing Ain't Talking About Love by Van Halen, live back, you know, the Light Up the Sky studio with Doug Pennick singing and Billy Sheen and Ingve. That's a whole nother studio trip. But live you hear when Ingve comes in with that beginning riff, bum, bum, kink, 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 kink. he might be able to shred balls, but rhythm guitar wise, Eddie will dust him. And you <laughs> hear the difference, go on YouTube and listen, even in the rhythms and the verses while Soto's singing. Ingve doesn't have that strong rhythm style because he spent most of his life going. <laughs> he sent it to joke and uh, Kiss was rehearsing next to us, and he made a joke. It was right at the time when Ingve was bro breaking, and he's like, "Yeah, I don't understand all those guitar players like that." It's, to me, it sounds like the phone ringing. <laughs> you can see Gene delivering that line, right? With yep. His, yep. Uh, too funny. His pompous tone, yeah, it was it was classic, and and I can't say that I disagree with that. But go listen to the Ingve uh, Soto live. Ain't talking about love to get a taste of what we're talking about with Townsend, and then go listen to some of Townsend's rhythm work, right? Because rhythm guitar, it's an underrated art anymore. But uh, I say you're not a complete guitar player without it, right? I Joe Pass you. always said. You, you're not a complete guitar player unless you can sit down by yourself una unaccompanied without a bass or a drummer and play a whole song with all the counterpoint. So there's that. Yep. Spoken we by a legend. About everyone from Pete Townsend to Eddie Van Halen to Rick Nielsen to Joe Pass in this fine installment of The Who. Yeah, that's right. Deep cut dive. Do you have any, a uh, couple tidbits to throw out at the end? Any uh, honorable mentions? Of course I do. There I always go. do, man. It's hard to keep it down to five. How about off Who Are You? Trick of the Light. Yeah, that's, yeah. So that's two off that. And I came with one more I wanted to throw out. Can I just throw out one more from Who By The Numbers? Uh, however much I booze. I don't drink, but I can relate to that too. <laughs> Pete was a big time... Uh... Big time drinker right about that point in time. Mm -hmm. You think he was a, uh, I'm trying to remember, he was a brandy guy. He was a brandy or cognac or, or both. I don't know. But I think uh, if you if you read up on the, the the legacy of the who and the history of the who, they talk a lot about his uh, alcohol binges from uh, that time period. So however much I booze was totally autobi autobiographical. Yeah, cognac. I remember that. I, didn't, I never uh, tasted it, but I remember that name because it was on our Megadeth tour writer. Oh, okay. It had to be the cognac, had to be the Kahlua, and had to be the Stoli for the white Russians. Not into any of it. I couldn't, I couldn't go on stage and play. Yeah. If that was, yeah. If that was anywhere in my vicinity, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. There you go. All right. Well, there you have uh, some 
deep cut recommendations into the discography of The Who. Uh, for those of you big Who fans, offer up five choices of your own. Uh, deep cuts from their catalog for those who maybe only know, you know, the usual suspects. We know what those are. Won't Get Fooled Again, Bob O'Reilly, Pinball Wizard, you know, so on and so forth. Going to go beyond that. Going to go a little deeper. Beyond my generation and uh, can't explain and all that kind of stuff. So, uh Put that in the comments below and visit us on the web at www.cetranquility.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Make sure you go check out Jeff Young's new single, Slow Burn, which can be picked up where, Jeff? All three of the first available singles from my forthcoming instrumental album, my second solo album. Album's called Revolutions, Monsoon. And the flash and slow burn are all available for your listening and purchasing pleasures at jeffyoungsongs.com. The radio show, yo, is jeffyoungjams.com. And uh, all the tracks are on Bandcamp too at instrumentalguitar.net. So they're and out I there. I got a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash jeffyoungtube. That's your JYM TV. That's right. So go check it all Love out. Me. Check it out. And Jeff is busy working on the next uh, single from or Wave the, Rider. Uh, Wave Rider. So uh, I'll be on the lookout for that. Oh, one you've it. heard the rhythm track. It's huge, right? I have. Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe the rhythm track we got on this. I mean, I had my amp in a little cube, so it's really fat and punching in your face. And I use the flying V, but the guitars in drop C tuning. So that's like uh step down so when you play an open d chord like your pinball wizard chord it would sound like a c and then i tune the low e string down to a c ah. <laughs> it's pretty sw- i was listening to a lot of chris whitley at the time and badlands it's, uh, people who dig badlands you heard a little satriani in there mm-hmm. yep even with no leads on it yet yeah, with no so leads yep cool. yep it's a little Van Halen-esque in there. So if you, if you like that swampy, danceable, heavy kind of guitar detune thing, I think you'll dig it. Cool. So uh, about soon, hopefully in a month or two. Yeah, I was going to say about a month or so that might be ready. Okay. That'll be single number four, and I'm just going to keep going till I release. I hear you don't like long albums, so I, I might not be able to release more than 10 on this one. <laughs> Well, 10 makes sense. 10 will be about, what, like 45 minutes Ele- or so? 10 or 11. My last <laughs> yeah. solo album was 11 tunes, so maybe uh, this album will go to 11. There you go. Going to 11 is good. So make sure you check that out, and uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow morning. Martin Popoff coming back on the show tomorrow morning. Marty! For Deep Cut Dive. Martin, Mr. Popoff from Canada. ACDC Deep Cut Dive. So that's coming out tomorrow morning. We'll see you all then. Take care. Bye-bye. Cheers. <laughs>